Even if the good doesn't seem good I'll stick together Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What do we have here? A sleeping baby. Good morning, Artis. So, Artis slept last night from 11 to 3.30 a.m. And then Chloe had to wake him, fed Gave him. him. a little bit of boo. And then he went to bed at 3.30 and slept all the way through to 7.30 and we had to wake him and give him a bottle this morning. A so, bottle or a boob? A boob. <laughs> <laughs> so... We got some good sleep. We're ready for today. Let's go, buddy. Uh, we're, we're also I taking you through... I don't know, she fucking squirmed or something. We're going to take you through just a bit of a run, run through on how labour went. So, Chloe... You can take them through that today. Yeah, I will for sure. We, um, we filmed the entire labour and birth, but that probably won't be up for a week or maybe a bit more because the videographer is editing. We didn't want to vlog in there because we wanted to be as present as we could. So when that's ready, we'll upload it. But for now, we thought, why not? Let's start vlogging. Hi, Mama. Hello. Hello, monkey. Oh, what are you doing, bud? Fucking Sam sleeping. Put your head, Fred. Sorry, I know it's a bit annoying. He's been so amazing. Can you look? <laughs> what a cute boy. I like your outfit, buddy. Alright, should we take him down? Yeah. Little Kuwana. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Alright, while the little one naps, we might tell you how we arrived here. Mm hmm. Hello, everyone. All right, so the little man's asleep next to us. Oh, he's moving about a bit. He's moaning and moaning. But we thought, because we... Oh, I don't even know where to start. So it's now Wednesday. Oh, it feels like all the days are in one. Chloe started her pre-labor at 2 a.m. on Friday. Yeah, so I started getting um, some like back pain and front pain every five minutes I'd say yeah and it was like bearable like I could talk through it they were fine and that happened for like I'd say 12 hours would you say yeah um yeah they were 12. getting like closer together some were further apart and then um some were more intense than others and then about after about 12 hours I started getting like a lot more painful ones hey they were they spaced out a little bit so they came maybe every six minutes or so, but every time they came, they were like a lot more than the other ones. So the other ones are anywhere from like one and a half minutes to three minutes in between, but they yeah. were like bearable. So she was more like, that went on for how long? 22 hours. Yeah. So they started getting a lot more intense. And then I went through a period where they were like so close together. They were literally two minutes apart, but they were only 30 seconds long. Yeah. Remember that? And then they were like a minute 30 apart. But they were like really, the peak was like really, really strong. And then that's, when did I, when did we call them? Our midwife came over yeah. at 12 o'clock Saturday night. Yeah. So 12 o'clock on Saturday night, our midwife came over because was Chloe that, was yeah, like. Yeah, started vomiting. And she was in, so like she had a posterior. Yeah, he was posterior. So his head was on my tailbone and his back. He turned in the birth canal though. So he wasn't born posterior, but. He was posterior when I was in labour, which is why it was so prolonged and... So yeah, we'll start painful. off by basically by the time our midwife got there. Really I keep saying our midwife, like she helped me. But by the time she got there, Chloe was really like going downhill. We were like in the shower and she was like, oh my, like I had to 
massage every part of her every time she went in and then she started vomiting because she was in so much pain in the shower which that was actually the funniest story because <laughs> i was leaned over her pushing her pelvis massaging it like that so i was leaning over her back and she was leaning forward on the ground and she went and it splashed all everywhere and it said he's and it stunk oh but my God, it i am um, so bad i was leaning over her back and i was like <laughs> I nearly spewed all over her back. It was, it was so fucked up. And then I was like trying to keep it together. I was like, it's okay. So I was like, lifted up the drain. I was like shoveling fucking Betty's burgers down the drain and it stunk. And she was still having contractions. So I'm massaging her while the spew on my feet. And then what happened? That was um, when it really. Oh no. We, I was like, she examined me, yeah? When I was three centimeters. Oh yeah, so she's so like, after. <laughs> you can't go to hospital. I was like, fuck. So I started getting like worse pains, remember? But they were spacing out. So she's like, get a rest. So I would like lay down. And then when it would happen, I'd stand up and I'd... <sighs> so she's trying to have like literally six, seven minute micro naps. And it would be like, we'd both lay down and just trying to fall asleep. And then it was like, she'd go wake up and have a contraction. We'd all stand up and be like, oh, let's go. Yeah. With massage and they hold and I... And that went on till 6 a.m. Yeah, but then they started getting really close together and they were so painful, remember? We were laying in bed and they started getting yeah. a bit closer together. I was like, I can't and I was fucking... actually vomiting in bed, like every contraction towards the end. I would just vomit even though I had nothing left to vomit. So that's when I was like, I don't care how dilated I am. I want to go and get some like pain. She's like, I also, she's like, I also want to be settled into the hospital. And she was like, we're really scared about the drive there. So, yeah, we got in the car. I was driving. I had Chloe on the front seat. If this is like you're facing here driving, Chloe had like her ass up like this and she was like this in the car. I was driving like he the heat, heat pack, pack on her bum. I was like trying to massage while driving and I was like, let's go. We've only got like 12, 15 minutes. We can get there. And it's like everything is just like a total like hype up. Remember I was just before we left, I was just bawling my eyes out. You're like, why are you crying? I was like, <laughs> Because I was at breaking point. I couldn't do it anymore. I was like, I literally cannot do it anymore. And it was so I hard to, to watch because there's nothing you can really do. And then when we got there, I like, because I had everything packed, ready to go. And we had like this admitting book that you needed to take in with you. And we didn't know, but our midwife took it. And we got there and Chloe's having contractions. Like, all right, let's go. Let's get everything. And I knew where it was. And I was like, oh, fuck, the book's not here. And then so Chloe's like, what do you mean? <laughs> and I was like, the book's not here. I was looking around the car and I was fucking freaking out. I was in the glove box. I was looking through the bags. And I was like, and she's like, oh, yeah. And I was like, all right, Sheree, you got to take the car. Go home. I think it's still at home. I'll take Chloe. I'll go up. And it's like, you just have to be like so switched on. And then we got upstairs and I was like, you're not going to be able to get admitted because we don't have the forms, but we'll wait here. And then we got there and they're like, yep, your forms are done. Your midwife already gave it to him. And I was like, oh. And we were like, oh my God, quick ring mum. Tell her that the forms are already here. And then every like two minutes walking over, I'd get a contraction. Remember, you walked back and then a lady was like, are you going to have the baby here? <laughs> I was like. No. Because no, I had to, I because yeah, that's right. Because the baby bag. bag was in the car too. So when Cherie went to take it, I was like, no, nah, we can't have her take that because we just don't know if we need anything from that. So I was like, I'm gonna have to run back, get the bag out of the car, then she can go get. The... So I just sat in the outside of the hospital, going, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, are you gonna give birth? And then we went up, and I got. Um, I couldn't get the epidural for about an hour and a half, was it? Yeah, so at this point, she that, was already like 30 all... something hours in and she was just like, I can't honestly do this yeah. anymore. Her back felt like it was breaking every time. Because it was posterior. I couldn't actually get through the contractions unless someone was counter-pressuring my back because it felt like my back was going to snap. Like it was just, I can't even describe the pain. It was like it shocked, it was shocking me every time I had a contraction, my body was in oh, shock. Oh, you could see like shaking. she got to the point where any pain so even just like touching her or the smaller contractions were just like ripping her apart you know when you get to the end of like your your threshold she was there and it, then <laughs> yeah and then the worst <laughs> fucking part of the entire labor happened they um i couldn't get the epidural for an hour and a half so they were like we're gonna break your waters and give you sterile injections in your back so they inject water into your nerve receptors and they were like it just it feels like an ant bite 
That's so what I they like, said. Okay. All right, all right. Yeah, like, yeah, but I can deal with that. <laughs> little boy anyway, ant, little fucking sugar <laughs> ant. They put them in, and I literally went, ah, what the fuck was that? Like, I nearly no, she, punched she, my midwife. I was standing in front of her holding her, just thinking, okay, like, little nice little ant, boy, she should be fine. <laughs> and she screamed, what the fuck was that? What the fuck did you do to me? <laughs> and then they did, because they had to do two, and then two, and then she was just like, I was, I was, in, I was actually almost going into shock. And then shock. they did the second ones, and I was just like, ugh. Like, I was just crying because it was so painful. It was the saddest part of the entire labor, easily. They were so painful, and then, but they really worked. Like, they took the edge off for that hour, and I could get through the contractions. I could still feel the back pain, but it wasn't as, like, really sharp in my back. Um, then, what yeah. Happened? I was the, getting in the shower. No, no. They took uh, bloods. After the sterile things, you didn't do anything. Oh, yeah, you went back into the shower yeah. until the anaesthetist came. And yep. then once he came, because once you get the epidural, you're not allowed to move around anymore. Yeah. So she had. So that. I had the epidural. Um, that was fine. Like wasn't painful at all. The, even the needle for the anaesthetic, that was nothing because I just had the fucking sterile injection. And then um, got the epidural laid down, and I was like, it took the edge off. I could still feel everything. It wasn't a full block, and I could just top myself up if I needed extra pain relief, but. Yeah, she could still feel pressure and everything like that. I could like still that. feel everything, um, which was good. That's what I wanted. I didn't want to go completely numb because then they would have had to forceps and vacuum and I really didn't want to do that because... Oh, you're underselling yourself there with the pushing part. Like, oh. when we got to... So she was... Once she was 10 centimetres dilated, everything happened really quick. Yeah, so I was five centimeters when I got the epidural. Yeah, so she so was... it took about eight hours for me to dilate to oh six. Six. It was about six. Sorry, six. Six hours, and I started pushing at like three thirty, but I had pressure in my bottom for like four hours. I was like, <laughs> his head's definitely there. I'm actually pooing myself. <laughs> she was literally like, I don't know if it's a poo or a contraction. It's like I'd sneak around oh, and baby. I'd sneak around and look and I was like, no, nah, no, nah, you're fine. And then like another 15 and minutes. And then I'd like every contraction I'd start pushing and then just poo would come out. <laughs> I checked around the thing at the side. I was like, no, nah, no, nah, you're, oh, yep, little cat shit hanging out. <laughs> It's, fucking fun. it's part of like the experience. She's like, do you want me to clean it up? And my move, I was like, no, I'll clean it up. You don't like think about stuff like that when you're in there. Like it's so pure the whole moment. You don't like, you don't look at it and be like, ew, that's gross, that's poo. It's like you just. I don't know. But, so then when it was coming, the pressure was so intense. I was like, I need to get up and go to the toilet. I just wanted to get up and move around. So that was the shit thing about the epidural is you just had to stay laying flat. So I was really uncomfortable. Wanting to like move, but it took the pain away. So and when she honestly, got, to I needed that. F I needed the rest. And then yeah, she she got to ten centimeters after the six hours, and then we um the the control like the, the pushing started, and then what it was it what's it called that you had? Oh, I had tachycardia, which is when your heart rate is really high. So I had that the whole when they were late, um monitoring me at the hospital the whole time. So. I think, did he have it? Yeah, you yeah, both did. That's both why. Did. Yeah. Because Chloe was in the middle of contractions, and maybe about 15 in. minutes in, and then, because the, the, it's, we only had, we and the not, head at that point was going back up, back down. Not even back though, back you, back not, not as much as you think it was, but that's what we were trying to encourage Chloe to do because Maria, which is our midwife, looked at me because the doctors come, the doctor only comes in when there's a problem because the midwife obviously wants to deliver it and it's like, we've, you've got your plan, but the doctor came in and started so talking to The doctors to came in twice, remember? Yeah. They came in at the start and said, your heart rate's too high. Like, we don't think it's safe that you can be pushing with a high heart rate like that and he will get distressed. So... And then they came out and were like, Maria was I was like, like, are you seriously coming in while I'm mid-push? And I, I actually think I said something to the lady. I was like, I'm pushing. Like, what are you, yeah, what just, are you doing? You were like, you were like, what are you, like, can you just let me, I'm still they really having like distracted me in that. I didn't want to stall because he was right there. And then when they came back the second time, they were like, hey, like, and then Chloe's like, me, like, they're like, hey, um, you know, I think we're going to have, what was it? The vacuum they wanted to use. Yeah, we want to do the, the forceps. forceps and, and then Chloe's like. She's like, like no, I'm going to have, like, I don't want to do that. And I'm about to have a contraction. She's like, okay, do your contraction. And then, and then, and we'll then come back in. Chloe just was like, look at me. I was like, you've got five <laughs> fucking pushes. Let's go. And then, like, our midwife was like, come on, Chloe. And Chloe literally went beast mode. And she was just like, 
<laughs> and she got the head out. So in those five pushes, the head come out, and then the doctor like looked at me. Up, she's like, "Yep, she's got this." And the doctor's like, "Okay, we're gonna let you deliver it naturally." So she had literally five pushes to get the head out without intervention, and she did it. And we were like, "I was like looked and saw the head, and I was just like, yes." And then the second, like, she's like, "Okay, don't push too hard because you're gonna push you shoot him across the wall." <laughs> And then I went around. And I went to push and she's like, wait, 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 so, so, so. Because then and I then went just around. And vomited out and Mitch like. I caught him. So I delivered him. So I put my hands out under his head was sticking out and I went and caught him and then placed him on Chloe's chest and we were just like. We were just like. At that point I didn't know what was going on. I was just like in shock. I was like, did that just really happen? Like I forgot we to can't, tell. Honestly, lucky. So obviously we filmed the entire like birth. Um. Yeah, the entire birth, so... Not that, like as a vlog form, though. No. It's like a video reel form. So you guys will be able to see all that. And I, honestly, it's such almost a blur. Like, even looking at the photos from Labor, I was like, holy shit. Like, because you're just in the zone. Like, we were so, was so switched on for fucking hours. Yeah, it's crazy how, like, intense the whole thing is, hey? Crazy. Um, what happened after that? Oh, yeah, so we came out and he was breathing weird. I was like, is he meant to be breathing like that? It was like really phlegmy and <laughs> <laughs> So they took him to check him straight away, remember? Yeah. And he was having like, he had respiratory dis distress. So um, they did all his tests and everything. And they ended up coming back in the doctor. So this is like five minutes after I gave birth. There's a lady in my vagina <laughs> stitching me up. <laughs> Chloe had her legs up on stirrups. It was like just like that. People. There's like five people in the room. They're just like sewing her vagina and talking to her casually. <laughs> but I was so upset because the doctor came in and he was like, we think he might have an infection and just like broke all this news to us. And we were like, what the fuck? Five you literally gave us like, it. we won't go into what the decisions were and stuff like that. But it was like, they basically gave us a really big decision to make early on. And they were like, one in 10 babies can die from what he might have. He might not have it. So you might have to do this, which comes with this risk and it doesn't come with this. Yeah. So basically gave us like our first 30, 30 minutes within being parents. We had like this ultimatum to make and like we were so distressed about it because we were yeah. like, fucking hell, like what do we do? And then it was really actually like a growing experience because our midwife was like, welcome to parenthood. These yeah. are the decisions you have to make and you're going to have to deal to live, like you have to live with them. So you do what feels right to you and you're going to have to learn to live with that. And we were just like, it's true. Yeah. And I think we made a really good decision. We did because if we had taken him home that night, we would have been stressed because obviously we're first time parents, every little sign, we don't know the signs, but we stayed in hospital for an extra few days and we had He did Inku, what was it, Inku the first night? He was in the, Niku. um, Niku, he was in the, um, Oh, he was in the um, incubator yeah. and his heart was going so weird. Remember, his oxygen was up and down. He kept beeping. And you know what was the fun? Like, because one of the things that we didn't want to put him in that was because we didn't want to take him away from Chloe. Yeah. Because it's like skin to skin, skin and the to bonding. Skin. But when we, when he was in the um, incubator, his heart rate was going everywhere. As soon as we took him out and put him on Chloe's skin and it was we still being monitored, monitor. all these levels came back up to normal. Literally perfect. Like everything was steady and flowing and in the right um averages and so oh, it just shows it's like crazy like he just trust your intuition on stuff like that too like me and chloe both after that were like you know what we're deciding now like we like know he's what's... best with us and he's yep. best on our chest and that's where he feels obviously he's been in me for nine months so that's where he knows that's his familiarity so that was that was the experience it's pretty hectic but it's it nuts. was so amazing. It's like it's Wednesday now, and challenge. it feels like we've had like one day between <laughs> Friday and Wednesday, and we're both just like. It was the biggest challenge, but also like the biggest reward ever. Hey, it's the most amazing thing I've ever Emotional. seen. And if you see your partner go through it, you can just get this level of respect that you'll never, ever, ever, ever have. Like it's insane. I was fucking like, I was like her biggest hype person ever. He was like through the pushing. He was being a beast with me. He was like one, two, three. <laughs> I was, every groan she did, I did it at the same level and the same noise. I was like, we got together. Like, He's like, come on, squeeze my hand. Come on, as hard as you can. It was so good. He was so good. But it was the best, oh. like, oh, it was the best thing we've ever done. And now, like, we've had him for three days. Two days was in the hospital. We had him here last night. He's a fucking angel. He slept from... 
11. He did have a heap of mucus on his lungs, so it was yeah, good that right. we were in hospital because he was doing vomits that were all like mucus and he was choking on the mucus, hey? Yeah. I was so asleep. So we had to watch him during the night. I was asleep on his second night. And I heard a noise at like five o'clock and I went over and I just like something told it's so weird. This woke me up in the deep sleep. I hear this It's a little bit as loud as that and it woke me up. It's like you just know I went over and I picked him up and then he just started digging all this mucus out of his lungs and I turned to his side and I was like fucking hell like lucky this shit was happening here because Yeah, it was a bit scary and it was good to get um, different midwives that were sh clocking on we met so many different midwives and they were like helping us with everything honestly like it was the best experience, even staying in the hospital in that little room for two days, meeting and like getting stories, getting different people's opinions, like it was fucking amazing. We yeah, were like, it was. we were so like high on life in there. But we went through the public system and they were amazing. Like, amazing. They were so good. All the midwives were so, so nice and the doctors were nice too. Um, but yeah. We're so fucking happy with him. Oh, I just love him. He's so Do you want to see him? Hi. Hi, kitty. We love you. So yeah, that's that's most of the, the birth story. You guys will get to see the whole video when it's ready, but we thought we won't like have a break off YouTube for two weeks because it probably won't be off for two weeks. So we're like excited to vlog, we're excited to yeah. talk about it. and Got a new little life. Look at his little face and his lips. I just want to keep them. By the way, Chloe's the most natural mum ever. Like, it's fucked. So are you. I was, I'm so shocked at you. So I pretty much breastfeed and then Mitch does most of the other stuff. So he'll change and then he'll lay on Mitch's chest. Yeah, but it's like, if you don't get that time in now, you won't. So like, I want him to bond with me too. So whenever Chloe finishes breastfeeding, I grab him and just put him on my skin and let him rest for like hours. Yeah. We, were on the, we were on the couch yesterday for four hours and he was just laying on me and I was so fucking happy. We're going to be on the couch again today. <laughs> His legs are tiny. Now. Okay. Time to weigh you, buddy. Yeah. He wants to feed it. Look how skinny his legs are. He's got big feet. Look at the size of his feet. I know. There's a monster on He's got a big feet, bro. <coughs> oh, man. So this thing here, yep. it gets a little bit oozy. It gets really stinky. And then it'll eventually fall off. <laughs> but it looks great. You've lost some weight, bud. You've been on the shred. Oh. Let that boob naturally fall. And then when he, just let him be patient. Just be patient with him and then on. Chloe's learning how to use her bolt-ons. <laughs> New tits, who this? Hello. Should I show them my meal plan? Um, yeah, if you want to. I got an Ayurvedic meal plan, which is to help with the postpartum healing and producing milk and everything. So, I'm really excited about that. Molly just came over and bought cookies. Um, but we thought we would sign off on the vlog there. Are you going to show them the meal plan? Um, no. Nah. <laughs> to be honest, it's Let's just a meal plan. Let's talk about it. It's just a meal plan. It's delicious though. Um, I'm gonna go have a bath with like sits. It's like a herbal bath that will help Jesus with the Jesus Christ, I was about to say, who the fuck sits? <laughs> Danny calling that baby and she's upstairs having a bath with some bloke named sits. <laughs> it heals the stitches and stuff, so. While he's all content, I just fed him. My boobs are like rock hard. Oh, and you're making cute noises, but but we will see you in our next video. Uh, probably guys, the best vlog, yeah. But yeah, probably, Birth. or maybe another vlog. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Should we ask about what yes, we should the, change the YouTube name to? Yes. All uh, right. Before you go, we have been discussing because Chloe and Mitch is no longer. It's Chloe, Mitch, and Artis. So our suggestion is we like the Mac family. Mitchell, Artis, Chloe, the Mac family. But if you've got a better suggestion, leave it in the comments. And yes, please do. We, we, oh, I can't wait to see what people say. Same. Like, we've been thinking about it, like, yesterday, and we're like, ah. Oh. But I actually don't mind the Mac family. I reckon it sounds cute. There's the Orville family, but There's, Mitch's parents are, like, the angry the dad family. is like the Orville family. They already took that one. What about the Zeps? Well, we're not Zeps. <laughs> 
He's an Orville. True. I'm going to have to change my last name to Chloe Orville. Wow. That's an identity shift. Uh, leave suggestions in the comments.